Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to the Overlook Hotel here in Wasteland 3. Uh, my suspicion is this episode is going to involve us killing a whole lot more of the same three guys over and over again because that seems to be the, uh, the deal with each new gang location. So, I mean, let's start this off by just having Jim break into a bank vault, right? That seems like a pretty cool thing to do. I do think that so far it has seemed like, um, of the, of the get into places you're not supposed to be skills, lockpicking has maybe not been the most relevant, but it does, it is, it is the one that comes up the most. It's, it's very often the case that when you lockpick something, it's just like a little bit of loot. Um, but boy, you sure do get a lot of chances to use it. If you want a character to level up quickly, give them lockpicking. They get so many opportunities to gain XP from it. Ooh, fancy new rocket launcher and additional rockets. Powerful enough to destroy armored aircraft. Good luck, human targets. It turns out, uh, when you measure it a certain way, everything only has one hit point. I see the, I see the big case. We'll look at it in a second. Okay. More shotgun, overmolded grip, which is actually pretty nice. And a silver dollar necklace, which gives barter. This old silver dollar attached to a cord will show everyone that you're an expert trader. Look, I made a dollar one time. And everyone believing that you are an expert trader is the same thing as you being one, apparently. A gold-plated hammer, a smaller gold-plated cast of the Patriarch's signature weapon. This early prototype is too light to be wielded as a real weapon. The design of the handle makes it seem like it was meant to slide into a specific groove. Okay, I really, really lean it in on this. I get it. It's for something else. Maybe if we, maybe if, if we make that gold-plated toaster, we'll be able to equip the hammer to it. Okay, let's go this way. I mean, it might be time to just get into this fight. Because obviously, we're not going to be able to, uh, to head down here. Yeah, all right. I guess let's do it. So, how close can we get before people become aware? Well, there was a guy who was, like, all the way out here. It looks to me like they never get close enough for this to be a problem. We should be able to stand at the doorways pretty cleanly. Jim just kind of in the middle. Skelly sort of nearby. All right, let's do it. So who do we want to open up on first? I suppose one of the hoppers. You know what? If this guy's ju just going to put himself so much in the open, though, I feel like it would be almost disrespectful not to shoot him first. He so clearly wants it, right? Uh, and then can Jim finish him? Jim has no sh Oh, no, he has a shot from where he's standing. Yeah. Alright, that's a good strong open. Uh, and then, we do want to take the hoppers pretty seriously, I think. Remember, Quan gets more damage when he's not in cover, which is the thing that I keep forgetting about. Oh, that's a shame. Can I... if I run this far forward, I believe... I believe we can run sideways enough to get a Stormer here, right? Maybe that's not a good idea, though. Let's have Brass step in. See, Brass can make it all the way up to here and can take good advantage of that cover. And I think that should deactivate the sprayers in the hall, yeah. Alright, well that's a, uh, that's a thing for another time. Let's focus. Okay, nicely done. This is probably a good time for Lucia's sniper rifle. What is the effective range of this? Quite... Quite long, actually. We definitely want to step in a little bit. I think this should get her... Yeah, there we go. I'm going to trust that other people can finish off the hopper. Anyone steps in close enough, like the hopper, for example, uh, she's got it under control. I might even just let her handle that. No, we probably shouldn't. We should probably do something about it. Because, like, what if she misses, right? 
Did that ringer just shoot it on the way past? Well, Skelly can't get close enough to shoot anybody else, really. Huh, why does she only have 5% chance to hit? Sometimes her hit chance is real good. Yep, this is 5, it's 5 everywhere. It's 5 on everybody everywhere. She does have the stats to operate this weapon, though. And we have seen her have a real hit chance. Hmm. I don't know. Well, it looks like she can maybe kill this thing with the flamethrower from back here, so I guess we'll do that. <laughs> or not, you know. Whatever. Alright, I do believe we're just gonna have Ringer run by and punch this thing to death. Alright, and then stand right here and do the uh, do the thundering strike. Oh no, over here. Alright, well that feels like a pretty good opening turn, right? Sort of. Do you know you're not a melee attacker? What are, these, what are these guys doing? Very questionable tactical decisions here. I guess he was going to some cover. I think what must have happened with this guy is that um, Ringer's position must have freaked him out so badly that he just didn't feel like he could stay over there. Like the, the cover he had over there no longer felt valid to him because Ringer was going to... Uh, is going to be in behind it. Pretty wild, actually. So, speaking of Ringer, let's clean up a bunch of these guys real fast. Jesus, Ringer's damage output is borderline obscene. If there was a law, it would be against this. Oh, we can't, just barely can't get there for even more murder. Uh, well, who's gonna, who's gonna do the job then? Can Jim get a decent shot on him? Yeah, we can, we can line something up. So three AP will leave me able to fire twice. The outcome was never wow. Uh, it turns out it will not be necessary though. Yeah, all of a sudden, a lot of our people are feeling way, way more effective in combat. Wait, what are these? Okay, keys to the guest suites. Fair enough. Alright, uh, I'm gonna have somebody who's not brass stand on that button. Because my guess is we're gonna need some mechanic skill to mess with this generator over here. Look, strangers, you're gonna see some bad shit here. And honestly, it's not for everyone. I've cooked some of Daddy's friends. Thrown them off things, tried... Peeling a guy's eye didn't work. Okay, it's it's not a thing you disable. It's just a, another toggle, an additional toggle. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I guess let's get in here and once again looting keys and probably missing out on little bits of XP um, by not lockpicking the doors. But probably it doesn't matter. Jim, I believe, is higher level than everyone else anyway, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, wow, Ringer's actually the lowest XP. I guess it must not um it must not award any bonus XP to the people who get the killing blows, or he would probably be the highest. Well, he is going to get a level up the very next time he gets experience from doing anything, and then we can go back and save that other guy. Sorry, it should be it should be Quan who is running around. He's got all of the perception. Okay, not great. Uh, what exactly are we seeing here? That's... The lighting in this room is very strange. 
<laughs> Why can I not see to the sides of this cave? Or this cage, rather. A ferocious Francesca. Plus 5% me plus five melee damage to all squad members. For some reason, that was what made the room visible. Uh, Rook, you still in there, buddy? This man has been badly beaten. From the nearby tripod and hook, you can deduce they've been using him as a human punching bag. He should be given medical aid before moving him. That seems sensible. But, you know, very simple medical aid. You deftly treat his wounds. Mere moments after you stabilize him, he takes a deep, rasping breath and notices you for the first time, and immediately is up and, you know, ambulating. <laughs> Peering through swollen eyes, he takes in your ranger uniforms and chuckles. His amusement is interrupted by a coughing fit. Finally fucking made it, huh? Finally found the time? Assholes. I mean, listen, I I don't necessarily think that all of this criticism we're receiving is, is invalid. I did spend a lot of time goofing off in Colorado Springs. Uh, say nothing. He steadies himself before continuing. Uh, this shit's my fault, not yours. Couldn't keep my mouth shut. Never could stand bullies, and this place is fucking full of them. Anyway, you came for me, and I won't forget that. I guess you took out the guards. <laughs> Bastards ain't so tough now. N now that they're dead? Yeah. Uh, are you okay? Uh, hands off. I'm fine. Alright, I guess. Where's Vic? Patriarch's wing. They dragged me in there a bunch of times for my hourly beatings. <laughs> I didn't mind much. Better scenery. Gonna be hard for you to get inside. Heavy security door. Also, I'm pretty sure they're holding the leader of one of those ruling families in there, so uh, take it slow and check your targets. Okay, Rook feels that we need to be explicitly advised not to murder civilians. I could see why he might have that concern given what he just heard happened in this room out here. All right, man, when you're ready, head for the lobby. I will. Just, uh, gotta rest a little more. Okay, I think th th this is coming together pretty well so far. We're saving a lot of people. We're not falling into a lot of horrible traps or anything. It's okay, Pris. You can do this. There's no point in both of us dying. Just close your eyes and run. Wow. I can't do it, Violet. I really can't do that to my sister. This literally just is a Joker thing. Like, this is this is 100% a real thing the Joker has... Well, not, you know, not real. But a, th a thing that in a fictional story the Joker has already done. You have to, Pris. Do it. No, wait. Who is that? You. You're not with them. Help us, please. Vic Buchanan forced us to stand on pressure plates. If one of us steps off, it'll blow up the other. And also the one who stepped off, given that you're in the same room and the size of these drums. One of us has to make a run for it and kill the other. Eventually, we'll be too tired to stand and we'll both die. We can't even take a step. I think maybe the trap can be disabled with that box over on the wall there, but we can't reach it. Ladies, it's me, Lucia, remember? We'll find a way to get you out of there, I promise. Lucy? But you look so, uh, cool. Look at her, Violet. She's got scars now. She's a proper wasteland warrior. All right, Priscilla, keep it in your pants until we figure this out. She flushes, then nods at you. Okay, so she's in... All right, maybe there's something going on here, but still, you know, the trap. Uh, all right, just... We're going to look around and see what we can do to help you. I don't Take feel that the we... electrical box. There must be something you can do there. Please Yeah, hurry. this is not a problem that's going to be solved with conversation. I'm assuming this will be a thing for brass. The cables running across the floor terminate in a metal box bolted to the wall. The front panel looks like it can be detached easily. Could be a booby trap. Guess we'll find out. The panel comes off easily, revealing a nightmarish tangle of wires. Whoever put this device together was either in a hurry or had very little idea of what they were doing. Well, seems like we could probably fix this. The mess of wires is impossible to untangle, 
but the shoddy workmanship also means the device is easy to short-circuit. Using several bits of metal and your engineering know-how, you interrupt the flow of electricity. That was amazing! You just reached in there and fixed stuff! <sighs> Why didn't we just pull the wires coming from the box? <laughs> Priscilla blinks, then smacks her forehead. Wouldn't be that easy, ladies. Stuff like that only works in stories. <sighs> oh, and, um, Lucia, I I'm sorry about Isaac. He's an idiot. I know. So, where are you headed now? Uh, away, I suppose. We'll run back to Colorado Springs, if we have to. Our mother is here too. She's in the Patriarch's wing with Victory. She's not pleasant, and she doesn't much care for us, but if you can, please help her. She nods to herself, gives you a final smile, and leaves. Yo, you should definitely not just- okay, we have a car! Okay, hopefully they'll catch those guys in the lobby. Um, yeah, that was, first of all, completely trivial. Secondly, like a really dumb version of the thing, because it's not a one of us survives thing. The way this is set up, if either one of them stepped off the, stepped off a panel, it would kill both of them. So that, like, element of, of, will you save yourself to kill the other one doesn't exist in this version of the trap. Basically, just a bad job all around. Marriage counseling. The casing of this ancient cassette tape is cracked in places, but still seems functional. The typewritten label is badly faded, the writing lost under layers of grime. And also, dollars. Session 13, Jim and Nancy, March 21st, 1998. Nancy, last time you were talking about Jim's inadequacies as a sexual partner. Would you like to expand on that? Now wait just a goddamned minute. You've let her talk for 12 sessions straight. When's my chance? See, Dr. Meltzer, this is what I'm talking about. Everything's always about you. Why the hell am I paying for these sessions when you're always taking her side? If you're unhappy with counseling... Unhappy? I wish the fucking bombs would fall, so I wouldn't have to deal with another minute of this. What's that noise? I don't know. Maybe some kind of drill? Oh no, is that... It can't be! Oh, thank God. See, like, that joke's funnier if he just says, I wish the bombs would fall and then the sirens happen, and then it cuts right there. Them having to go deeper in and, like, spend another five seconds nudging you in the ribs over and over go again going, get it? Get it? That's like what he said. Get it? Really robs it of all of the, all of the comedy. I feel like that's a real thing with this game. It's always like, they do a good job and then they break it somehow because they can't stop touching it. As you approach the sturdy security door, you're greeted by an unknown voice. Uh, hey y'all, I can hear you outside the door. Hello, my name's Ash. I guess I shouldn't tell you that. Anyway, Vic says you can't come in here. Uh, okay, why not? Well, this is where all the security systems are. Uh, guess I shouldn't have told you that either. But what the heck. This guy's, this voice actor sounds familiar to me, but I can't quite place it. Okay, well, listen, buddy, you don't have to do this. Yeah, I know, but you know how, like, you end up stuck in a bad situation, and the only way out is to keep doing the stuff you don't wanna? This is one of those things. Okay, uh, see you! Uh, but, uh, but, uh, oh, there it is. Hmm. I wonder if there is a way that we could talk this guy down. Hello again! Uh, I mean, back off, okay? Or the hostages get it, okay? Uh, but... Okay, no, I guess not. But... Well, I don't believe oh, there that there's a kill switch. But if we can't get through the laser tripwire... Hmm. I guess I could just have someone run through that laser tripwire. It's probably fine. I think we're probably supposed to be able to disable it, because we've been able to disable those in the past. But I do remember it being an issue in the past as well. It looks like it's just... It's probably just going to like shoot some fire or gas somebody. 
Ringer, you got 400 health. Just go step through the thing. You shouldn't be coming after me, strangers. My father's the real monster. Him and Libby. At least I'm wrong in the obvious places. You can trust my kind of crazy. Okay, not not a super compelling case, actually. Uh, so there's this room over here that we just can't enter at all. Seems like an important one. I guess this is the way we gotta go, and if I'm not allowed to interact with this thing at all... Okay. Oh, I did, I did get my stag poisoned. Whatever, he'll be fine. Super weird, that seems like it shouldn't be that hard to interact with. Okay, swimming pool, filled with blood. We get it? We're crazy psychos! Okay, there is a Nox Bomber, which is a thing to be a little concerned about. A lot of nitro tanks in here. This doesn't seem like it's going to be too bad. You survive the gas? Not a chance. As it should be. He is unworthy. Nope, oh, wait a minute. Don't you dare. Alright, how's this going? 58 seconds, Jesus Christ. Alright, hold on a second. Is there any danger of my stag dying? Probably not. Let's just go ahead and antidote a little bit, though. Like, in a lot of cases, it's not really worth doing, and I think this, honestly, is one of those cases. But also, I'm impatient, and I want to just get to the fight already. Let's just go ahead and antidote the stag. And then, why did I put it in over the medic packs? Those are those are the things that need to be equipped right now. Uh, here we go. Alright, let's go do the thing. We got a lot of dudes to murder. So a breather has walked right up. I think the best case scenario for us would be to start in on their ranged units, right? Let's get people closer. I'm a little leery of issuing a blanket move order, because people move in real arbitrary seeming ways sometimes when we do those. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Spotted us. That seems like a decent way to start it, right? So over here we got a Fumer and mostly melee guys across the thing. Shooters and a Nox Bomber, which we do need to deal with. So Jim, give everybody that little boost. And let's push them. Ringer can make it... Ringer can actually make it over to the Nox Bomber. I think I'm just going to have him do that. I think I'm just going to have him run that deep. Right, the Fumer, like, it's not totally trivial to get into control. I'm, there's a limit, though, right? Ringer's very tough, but there is a limit to how much fire he can take, and I'm wondering if this is going to be overcommitting. You know, his presence near the breathers definitely causes them to panic, though. I'm going to do it. Alright, let's try not to have people group up too much. Because obviously that Nox Bomber is going to be able to establish an awful lot of poison very quickly. Pretty much no matter what we do here. I wonder if it might have been worth it to just throw a, um, throw a turret out instead, honestly. This will probably be far enough for Stormer. Yeah. Alright, so I think we can probably kill this, this Fumer here. We need to get you in at least this far. Honestly, I'd really like her to get in like this, though. I don't know, I might be setting up a situation that's a little bit too easy for the Nox Bomber to take advantage of. Is there a way I can hit this guy without... No, we're not going to be able to do it without obliterating Quan's cover. Uh, hmm. If I switch to the pistol... Where can I get him from? 
here, so I, okay. We're only going to be able to get one shot. I don't really want to shoot Quan's cover. I'm going to have Lucia step all the way up to here. Maybe this is going to turn out to be a dumb idea. It's weird that there's no precision strike equivalent with the, um... With the sniper rifle, right? Doesn't the sniper rifle seem like exactly the kind of weapon you would expect to have such a thing? Oh, sorry. I was like, why are my ranges so bad? But yeah, that'll do it. Okay, see here, here we totally have him. Oh, right, except minus... Do you know what 100% means? Why even fire? Why even do the thing? Jim, just go into ambush mode. Wow. 193. Damn. Alright, well, the stag and the provost still help with that. Ah. Threw her high cover and everything. That is totally fine. Don't think that's going to be a big deal. clone dead? I think my clone's probably dead. Oh, the Provost is actually pretty badly injured. I didn't notice. Uh, well, Jim dropped this guy. And then, is there any chance Jim could pick up a second? Probably not. As I remember, there is a, there is a leader multi-kill bonus that would be cool to get, but seems unlikely. Alright, Ringer is definitely in a little bit of a spot now. Hmm. Alright. Quan, do this. Then do this. And then can we get him close enough to... to have torrent strike on these guys? Oh. Reload your gun. So the, the free shot is kind of weird that we've seen in the past that sometimes it won't let us select it even if we should be able to do it because of Stormer. So I'm not sure this is going to work. And I think we want to be in a spot where I have no... where I don't have cover from any angle, right? Okay, yeah, it won't let us initiate this even though we absolutely should be able to. Stormer gives us free um, free torrent strikes, but only if we already have the AP to be able to torrent strike. Uh, Lucia should probably just heal. Brass can just barely not make it to cover while also shooting, which is really annoying. Juan is going to get extremely shot. The, the amount of shot that he is about to be is going to be very disappointing for a lot of us. Now, unfortunately, I don't think there's a good way... Yeah, Skelly's just, just going to have a bad shot, it looks like. Well... Stupid fire-resistant enemies. We finally get her gimmick online, and all of a sudden, everybody everybody is resistant to it. Did Jim gain a bunch of AP? No, okay. It's just, it's misrepresenting his position a little bit, because he only has two AP, so he cannot fire. No, nope, that shot is... Sometimes Jim gets to shoot for free, I guess, and I don't remember why that is. It's not going to have anything to do with any of this. Does he have a perk that lets him shoot for free? First attack after reloading an empty weapon definitely doesn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure why Jim just gets to shoot for free occasionally. It's definitely not anything he's doing. It's a benefit he's receiving from someone else. And I have no idea why. 
He is probably about to get set on fire. Okay, so I think what we gotta do with Ringer is probably de-poison and then hit a healing thing. But I'm not sure. I'm assuming that if I antidote right now, it'll just instantly re-poison me. So I think what I'm gonna do is step over here. Let's finish this guy off. Hey, gym leveled up. Cool. And then maybe we, like, run to here. Will it let me use an antidote out of my inventory on myself? 2 AP. Okay. Ah. All right. Uh, let's... Hmm. So I want to equip it. I think I'm probably going to use a hypo to heal myself. Oh, I should have used my cyborg thing while I was still over there next to those guys. And then also I throw a punch. I'm protected. Weird thing to yell in the middle of combat. Oh, okay. The bot's got the Provost under control. Everything's fine. I really appreciate the loyalty of this, uh, this stag who will just who will go through absolutely anything on our behalf. Alright. The time has come. Let's pressure this guy. Get repoisoned, but it doesn't matter because I already healed. I think we'll just build combo for a great big Shaolin strike next turn. Yep, so you're done for. Uh, Jim might be able to finish off this Fumer. Just like move to here and knock his head clean off. Honestly, these things don't really have that much health. I think I'm fine just going for the actual. Yeah. Was more likely to work. So let's see. 2 AP to move here, one shot, and then move back to cover, I guess. Or two shots, because I got my movement for free. Consolidate our efforts. Alright, Jim is spreading those bonuses kind of all over. Man, yeah, that's a pretty good one. Now that Jim has, like, real weapons and actual killing powder, it's so much easier for us to potentially make use of those, uh, those bonuses. You know what? I am not going to spend the Precision Strike, because we don't need it. Not too worried about anybody else, but I am going to depoison the stag. Everybody else, if they go down, we can just get them right back up. Oh, I guess we should loot. Even though I do not expect there will be anything of terrible value. Okay, that's like a real weapon at least. A scourer and some more tank legs. And a sauna maintenance key. Huh. This jury rigged device looked like it was slapdashedly assembled, held together by duct tape and spit. A gas tank, marked with hazard symbols, has been attached to pipes flowing out of the room. You can hear gas flowing into the pipes. Well, it seems like we should probably stop that, unlock, and turn the handwheel to halt the gas flow. You definitely unlock the handwheel and rotate it all the way. Flow of gas has stopped, disarming the device. Okay, well, we we did it. That's Aston Ward, who is presumably important. Hey, Lucia, you should be the one who talks to him. The door is open, the gas is vacated, and a middle-aged man has exited the room. That's Aston Ward. What in blazes did they do to him? He does look uh, a little concerned. He starts coughing violently. Then after a brief pause, he begins hyperventilating and shaking. Um, 
I don't know that it's necessarily going to be helpful for anyone for me to, like, grab onto this dude and prevent him from moving at all. <laughs> you watch closely as he gasps for air, choking and shuddering. His hands reach for you as if begging for help, but you remain out of reach. Slowly, steadily, he calms down and begins breathing normally. His mouth twitches, trying to form words. His brow wrinkles at the sound of his own voice. The gas took his voice, but he is stable. There's nothing more you can do for him. Ringer, you're gonna be fine. Okay, I mean, that's... That's some real... That's a real bummer of a consequence. Ooh, bolts. Good. Happy to have some bolts again. Oh, wait, hold on. That's... That's locked. Alright, also happy to have energy cells. Also happy to have a nerd. The computer display reads, Santa Clean Pool Hygiene Monitoring System V1.021. It has been 37,165 days since the last water quality test. Do you wish to test the water quality of your pool now? Sure. I... Spoilers, it's going to be low. <laughs> but sure. Commencing water quality test. Warning, high levels of human blood and other, other, <clears throat> other bodily fluids detected. pH level is normal. Do you wish to drain the pool? Uh, yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Commencing drain cycle. Warning, the presence of human remains in your pool may void your warranty. Contact customer service for details. No, definitely do not do that. Do not contact customer service. Would you... Would you stop messing around? Get up, we're doing stuff here. Right, obviously we're just gonna run back into the gift room and get redoctored. Alright, what do we have here? Some dollars. And also a Columbian barrel. Okay, that's a cool thing. Don't know why that person had a weapon barrel on them. And it's just a bunch of money. Okay, well, this is the reward for having eight nerd stuff. Just a, a handful of cash. Just like in real life, really. Alright, let's go ahead and push your first aid to seven so that you can save that other guy. And then, yeah, may as well cap your intelligence. I think that fits a lot. Oh, you know what? Somebody else leveled up, too. Yeah, Jim and Quan both have real level ups to spend. So, Quan, we were going to just cap out your nerd stuff, I think. And then, uh, I don't... Yeah, we didn't really have an interesting perk to take with you. I guess let's just start working on the nerd stuff. I mean, we, we haven't really seen all that many robots... But, presumably, there'll be some eventually. Uh, I think I like... This one? Enemies will shoot at the hacked stuff instead of me. And, yeah, more move speed. Then I clicked on the wrong person, because apparently I'm just having a real... A lot of clicking accuracy type problems today. So it would be two more skill points to get coordination up. And honestly, I think I might just keep cranking Charisma for the moment. Alright, do we have any perks that we are building toward? Not really. Uh, you're still just working on Leadership and Kiss-Ass, and I think I might store points up for Kiss-Ass. Leadership is cool, but it's, you know, it's a pretty linear scale. I, yeah, let's, let's cap out his Kiss-Ass before we take anything else. So, we're not going to have anything useful to spend perks on for a while. I guess just, like, a quick slot? That way you can actually have a grenade. May as well, right? Um, so smokes, frags, gas grenades? Um, sure. And then we did pick up an extra quick slot for you as well. Uh, do we want to have another person, or another, another summonable equipped, or do we want to have just a grenade? It does feel like basic grenades are pretty bad. Let's give her fancy grenades. Slightly fancier grenades. All right, Jim just got some skill points left over. Okay. So, I guess actually we should go check out this area that he just ran out of. What's up with this computer? Okay. Somebody halted all the experiments. 
Oh, there's really not, uh, not a huge amount in here, actually. The corpses of those who could not survive the sauna gas experiments have been piled in this corner. Well... What do you think? Do we run back? Uh, let's let's run back and... Oh, what is this? It's a lore book called Everybody Shits. Great. This dog-eared composition book smells like an outhouse, but its por pages are, are packed with dense lines of chemical formulae. And just a holiday catalog. Okay, well, I guess let's have a look at our new lore book. I'm sure this is totally going to be worth our time. Everybody shits, but some folks need more help than others, by Dr. Archibald Jakes Esquire. Hey, everybody shits, am I right? You, me, even the patriarch himself has to park his ass in the outhouse and lighten the load from time to time. But sometimes what goes in don't exactly want to come out. Like them damn army rations you find from time to time. Sure, they'll last damn near forever, but you eat enough of them and your guts turn to concrete. Well, old Dr. Jakes has you covered. This book will offer laxatives you can craft yourself using commonly available resources. Okay. So, sweets and salts and... I don't think that's actually useful information. I mean, who knows? It might be in real life. Rangers, this is Woodson. What's the status on the hostages? Uh, I guess all hostages are accounted for? I see. So you located and secured all five hostages? Outstanding. Man is gonna love hearing all about this once we get back to the Ranger HQ. Heck, you might even get a medal. Now let's keep your success going. Go take care of business with Victory Buchanan. I sharp Rangers. Shouldn't Riley be like convalescing right now? Oh, did I miss the medical crate? Ooh, and it has a thing in it. A wearable injector that gradually releases steroids just gives you an action point. Yo, that actually seems very good. Apparently I missed this ammo box as well. Alright, well who just wants an action point? Who's got a thing in their utility slot that they don't particularly need? Honestly, Lucia. Uh, you're getting weird science from yours. That probably makes sense to keep. You're getting leadership. I actually like that. Barter and two points of perception, probably not actually necessary. You have your EMP cylinder, which I sometimes remember to use occasionally. You know what? I'm going to give it to Brass. Brass is not really getting a lot of benefit out of that one point of Animal Whisperer. Alright, I'm going to go get medicine, and then we're going to look into resolving this next problem. We could just run up to that door that's impossible to pick, and... Um, Healing vapor tree. Yeah, we could just run up to that door and knock, maybe? Maybe the, maybe they'll open it so as to be able to shoot at us? But also, the game is trying to tell me straight up that the hostages are all saved, so maybe this is an okay time to press that dude who probably doesn't have a kill switch on the fact that even if he did have a kill switch, it would no longer be meaningful. Okay, I'm just going to open it. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I surrender, I guess. Good okay. Good job at saving all those hostages. To be honest, I really didn't want to kill them. Like, not at all. Uh, in my defense... I told you it was Vic's orders. I didn't want to kill anyone, but I can help you now that you're here, right? I can give you the key to Vic's place. Uh, yes, hand it over immediately. Okay, but you ain't allowed to kill me after. Or if you're gonna, you should give me a chance to run first. Fair's fair. Moving slow, he reaches for a chain hanging around his neck, unfastens it, and tosses it over to you. I remember Victory's boys. This one's harmless compared to them. And he's nothing next to Vic himself. Boy, the game really wants you to think you shouldn't kill this guy, huh? Eyes closed, hands shaking, he awaits your judgment. Uh, I do feel like... Should we just tell him to run? We don't actually know... 
who this guy is or what his deal is. He might have totally just been somebody who was here already. And Vic just was like, hey, you do this or I'll kill you. I'm just going to let him run, I think. You won't regret this, boss. You ain't going to see me again. Promise. Man, I thought I was dead. We don't even know for sure that he would have done it. I'm... I have a sneaking suspicion that he would not have followed through. We could have just come in here and told him to give us the key and he would have done so. Alright, commando armor and more helmets and stuff. Okay. Bomb components. Looks like Ash was making explosive barrels out of fertilizer. You know, so that the whole area could be filled with red barrels. I do appreciate, the, in most games I feel like they don't bother explaining why there are red explosive barrels everywhere. So I appreciate there being like a diegetic explanation for all this stuff. Alright, let's go save you. Hey Llewellyn, good news. I learned how to do medicine. Good to see you again, Rangers. Apologies if I seem a bit out of sorts. But I think the key in my belly might be uh cutting my insides a little. Okay, this is here. Let me let me just help you out with that. Wincing occasionally, he watches with interest as you clean and treat his wounds. Oh, feels much better, Rangers. Much better. Oh, I feel good enough to sprint all the way back to Colorado Springs. He still clutches his stomach, though. Uh, well, maybe in a little bit. Uh, just to let you know, we got into that vault, so... You... you did what, Rangers? Oh, I see, I see. You're just keeping the Hundred Family's treasure safe for them. Clever play, Rangers. Uh, nothing if not clever. So, uh, stay here for now, I guess? I think we're, we're good. Hopefully you won't die from that thing you did. Alright, I guess let's go and, uh, let's go and knock, huh? So, do I think we're gonna get into a fight immediately? No, this area looks pretty large. Probably Victory is not standing right on the other side of the door. That said, let's maybe just take up some positions here. Be, be ready in case things pop off. This message is from my people. Strangers, cover your ears. How the fuck are we supposed to take Colorado Springs if you can't handle a band of waste trash? I'm fucking disappointed. I really am. I'm in a finger-taking mood, guys. Alright, there's another one on the other side of the room that we should also get if we can. I feel like... Okay, just got... So many, so many perception notifications in a row there. I feel like people always deploy their turrets in symmetry in the wasteland. It's a weird thing. Well, let's definitely burn this as well. Oh, I don't like that you can't see that guy anymore. I need to move Quan to a spot where he has better vision. Alright, probably get that brass fall back to the door now. Let's just keep looking around, and apparently it's going to continue playing that perception noise over and over again. Okay, that's just Gwendolyn Reed. Hey there, how you doing? Is there nothing going on in this room? There is, I'm going to guess, a human head or something? Yep, sure is. Freshly severed. Based on the facial features, you can tell this was a member of the Reed family. Gwendolyn seems to be doing just fine with it. She is seated, hands locked into fists, sweating in the blazing heat from the fire. A glass of water lies untouched on the table behind her. A headless corpse slumps in a chair further down the table. She ignores it. Two empty chairs are labeled with reserved signs. She ignores these as well. She is glaring at you. Gwendolyn Reed. She's head of the Reed family. And my ex-boyfriend's mother. She's terrible. To everyone. You're not one of Victory's thugs. They at least look dangerous. Ah. You're the rangers that Saul Buchanan sent for. Months ago, if I recall. 
Where are my daughters? Are they safe? Uh, actually, yes. We rescued them. Victory had me sitting here for days, threatening to fill those empty chairs with my headless daughters, while you frolicked in the snow. That's fair. I did do a little bit of frolicking. I will have words with Saul Buchanan about the punctuality of his servants. Make no mistake. Now go take care of his infantile son. If you can even manage that. Uh, hey, who's that dead man at the table there? My younger brother. Victory Buchanan found it amusing to saw off my brother's head in front of me. He left the corpse to keep me company. And also, as he put it, in case I got very hungry. Again, this stuff just kind of isn't landing. It's... They want us to be horrified, but like even even in sort of a pulp way, it's just kind of not working. Uh, what can you tell us about Victory Buchanan's operation? Again, tac useful tactical information would be great. I have been sitting here motionless for days, you witless buffoons. Answering his questions and denying any association with his lawless sister Liberty, who he is convinced is plotting his downfall. As if he needed any help. Uh, well, I don't really want to talk to you any longer. I guess let's tell her what happened to Isaac. She listens, her face hardening. This is a mistake. You had no right to throw him in your filthy gulag. And I'll have him out as soon as I'm free. Okay, that probably didn't serve a lot of purpose. Uh, later. Please just go. Alright, so this leads outside, it looks like. I can't... There we go. The game's super weird about allowing you to walk through doorways, and also about allowing you to see through doorways. Like, you can't you can't see anything until you're on the other side, which is just... Uh, the, the line of sight calculations are bad. Like, can't see this. Really? Are you sure? Feels like maybe I should be able to see that right there. There we go. Okay, so now we get to approach the Nox Bomber from behind, which is probably pretty good. Uh, gotta watch out for this guy. No, he's not walking up the stairs. Yeah, we're definitely coming in from this angle. Do we want to split it up, even? Or do we just... I think we just want to have everybody come in this way. I don't think this is one where it makes sense for us to, to worry about flanks or anything. Also, several of us are so fast that our most effective flanking play is just run past the enemies and then be behind them that way. Alright, so I think we're gonna do... I think we're gonna do one of these. We're gonna just run in here. Let me position Quan such that he is the first person who is in the box. Okay. Now I have Jim selected for some reason. I was trying to Trying to do this so that Quan is the one who is chosen here. Because I definitely don't want to spend Jim's AP. Uh, uh. They appear in our dream. Well, you're not wrong. I did appear in your dream. Oh, most of my people aren't getting their turns for no reason. I guess the way it actually works is... It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Is the, the way it actually works. Uh, we could throw one of these out to just apply Shocked, and then... Seven AP is a rough place to be right now. Uh, we could have just glitched the turrets, I suppose. I'm gonna try just applying Shocked here. There's no way that we can do this in such a way that it will, uh, apply to those guys down there. Or that guy down there, rather. Um, or we could just shoot and then run to cover. I guess I'm gonna do that. If we're not going to kill the bomber anyway, we could do this, tag him once, and then uh, not make it to cover, actually. You make it to this cover. Yeah, the systems are weird and inconsistent, so I guess if you do this, then the people who are in the enemy vision don't get to go first? Despite the fact that that's not the way that... No, that's definitely not the mechanic, because we've done we've done it like this before. It just doesn't... There is no consistent mechanic. The game is 
buggy and weird. Boy, party pal, this would have been a good time for you to heal somebody. Okay, well, that does complicate things a little bit. The game, the game deciding to work differently right now than it has always worked does make things awkward. Uh, is there even a point in getting people up? I don't think so. I think we just we just burst these guys down as hard as we can. Because if we get people up, they're just gonna die again. Right, with them, they'll they'll get up, they'll be poisoned, they won't be healable, and then they die again. So Ringer, just go work on the other Nox Bomber. I think we might be we might be cool to Shaolin surprise him here. But also I could just normally attack twice. Using Shaolin Surprise is definitely a little bit less compelling now than it used to be, given that uh, it takes it takes two attacks worth of AP. Yeah, that seems like a pretty good start. Um, the people who can attack this guy should definitely be doing it. Oh, do I have... I have an 88 from here? Really? Weird. Well, I guess we have a question to ask. Do we want... We lose 10% hit if we step out, but we gain 15% damage, right? I think it's 15. Yeah. It is probably better to stay here. Hit chance is usually king. I'm going to reload now, and we're just going to spray. Yeah. And then Brass is in a position where she can throw one of our many, many machine turrets. Let's put this over here and make that guy's life difficult. And then still get to attack, although bad hit chance, like really bad hit chance. We back off a little bit, we get something. Although it did it did lie to me there, which sucks. Uh, so Brass can't or Skelly can't actually interact with any enemies. She needs a weapon in her other hand that shoots non um non fire damage. But she unfortunately is not skilled enough to use almost anything. She has some automatic weapon skill, only three points though. Yep, I don't think I kept anything that's low enough level for that. Well... I oh, know I did. I have a battle rifle. Okay, she's gonna do no damage with it. But not literally no damage. Which is important, because she will do literally no damage with all of her other weapons. Yep, feels pretty bad. But this is... It's some contribution. I mean, listen, if I have to back off after this fight and use the Doctor NPC again, I'll not be happy about it, but I, I totally will do it. Wow. Through the wall, even. Stag is very powerful. Jesus. Jesus, that's some damage. Ringer's really, really good at his job. Did you just kill my personal guard? They were my best friends from fucking childhood, man. I... Holy shit. I can't remember their names. Alright, so, I mean, getting these people up, apparently they're just going to go back down immediately because of the poison. So, I guess we just sit here and it's not... I don't think there's a lot of sense in using antidotes or anything. We're just going to wait for the poison to wear off and then heal up. Medic. Oh, the stag. Right. That would have been a good... That would have been a good thing to antidote. How is, um... Hey, not 
much use if I'm... Was the Provost even here? Actually, I think that, yeah, the Provost stayed out of that fight entirely, so... I guess he'll be fine. Alright, we'll just loot stuff and... Eventually all the poison will wear off and we can get back to just playing the game. I guess I should maybe... I'm gonna have one person use Antidote just so that we don't lose the entire party. I don't think that's gonna happen, but... The way they've implemented poison here is, like, profoundly annoying. And not dangerous at all, just annoying. A Tundra Sniper Rifle. That seems fine, I guess. Oh, no, no, don't. Juan, you're not the guy. Okay, it looks like the poison has had time to wear off. And hey, we got a, pre a plasma grenade from disarming that. Okay, now let's pick people up, because the poison has had time to wear off. And we'll just run back to the doctor NPC and get doctored. We've been picking up enough dollars that it shouldn't be a problem. Skelly's animations are 100% broken, and she's just unconscious on her feet. Yeah, okay, I'm pretty bummed out about the loss of our stag. We didn't see another one, did we? I mean, I guess we should grab the fox, because there's no sense in not having an animal, but obviously the fox is not ideal. All right, back to healing. And again with the... I assume the perception... It's something in this room was pinging. Maybe it was the head? I don't know. Don't know what the hell is causing all this noise. Three walkers. Okay, Dr. Hyde. Heal me up. I'm so glad they make me listen to the entire delivery of that word every single time. Alright, back out to what we were doing. Yeah, the loss of the stag is a bummer. We could definitely go back to where we picked up the stag and there was a doe. Might be the same bonus. I'm betting it's not. But it might be. Alright, so we're going to have to use the intercom, presumably. And, I mean, this has got to be it, right? There's not really anywhere else for Vic to be. Let's make sure everybody's up here. Hey, strangers! Shit! It took you long enough to get here. Uh, yeah, you need to open this door. We have some business. Rangers, let's not waste time talking. We should put this monster down. Play it safe, Rangers. We want him alive. Yeah, we're still playing along with the Patriarch for the moment. I think we want to take him alive. Yeah, come on in. Let's have some fun, huh? Wow. Hey, hey, look who it is, Clarence. Daddy's Rangers. <laughs> In the flesh. The Rangers? I heard they were a bunch of little fucking chicken shits. Did you hear what happened to my little brother? <laughs> fucking hilarious. I know it was hard to get here, and no offense, but you can fuck right off back to Colorado Springs and tell Daddy you failed. I like it here. Okay, well, obviously that's... Uh... You, but just put down your weapons and surrender. Rangers, I have to level with you. That sounds... fucking boring. <laughs> why would I do that? For real, though, why are we talking to him? Just walk into the room and grab his ass. Uh, let's see. Well, the gift turned on you. Your br your breather cronies won't help you now. Well, I'll have to give them a little pep talk about loyalty. Or take a shit in their oxygen tanks. Undecided. But I'm not worried. As long as I got my buddy Clarence here. Clarence? Clarence? Oh, no! Oh, Clarence! He was too 
days away from retirement. <laughs> nah, it's just me then, huh? Fine. You got me, Rangers. Now what? I think that was probably the most effective uh, so far of his of his japes, but it was ruined a little tiny bit by the subtitles. Um, the he was two days away from retirement thing really should not have been visible until he was actually saying it. Uh, so now you surrender is what? Oh, that it? Sure thing, officers. Oh, but hold on. Before you slap the cuffs on, I have a... Hmm, what's the word? A proposition for you. Don't lock me up. Take me with you. And I'll give you the VIP tour of Daddy's Kingdom. Everyone here knows me. Everyone's... Fucking terrified of me, and that means they'll be terrified of you. I mean, I'm I think I'm doing a pretty good job on PR myself, thanks. Uh you're out of your mind. Well, at least I tried. Take me away from all this, officer. He's more effective when you can see his face, I'll say that. I like I like him better at this point. This is Ranger HQ. Go ahead. Uh, we have a arrest thing. It's it's so weird to me. They keep giving you th this thing where it's like you can say this thing or this other thing that is the same fucking thing as the t t uh, whatever. There. Great job, November one. Colorado will be better off with that guy behind bars. Over and out. Uh, don't you fade me out and take me outside. I am not done looting yet. All right, what else is going on in here? There's, there's a container. Also, a toaster. You know how I feel about toasters. So we got ourselves a leadership book. Excellent. Winning the loyalty and love of your employees through personal magnetism. See, it's this is a funny joke. It's a funny mechanical joke that Vic had this book. Uh, we also got ourselves a Polar Vortex Assault Rifle, which deals cold damage. Okay, that seems neat. I mean, we don't need any more en weapons dragging on our energy cells, and also we don't have anybody who wants to use an assault rifle, but it's neat. And a recent medical evaluation of the Patriarch written by Dr. Nash Parker. Oh, that seems like it could be interesting. Let's have a quick look at that. Patient continues to experience tremors in both hands, muscular rigidity, and loss of balance. I have observed cognitive changes as well, such as irritability, impaired judgment and decision making, and moderate depression. All symptoms are worsening at a steady rate. It is my opinion that Mr. Buchanan is suffering from the so-called shaking palsy, for which there is no cure. At the current pace of symptom progression, I would estimate that Mr. Buchanan will be completely incapacitated within two or three years. Dementia is also likely. In my professional judgment, Saul Buchanan is no longer fit to carry out the responsibilities of his office. A successor should be found as soon as possible. Nash Parker, M.D., at the bottom of the document, someone has scrawled in an unsteady hand, Absolute nonsense. Remove Parker from my service and find a new doctor. Okay, well that's information that might be useful to us later. Let's fix this toaster up real quick. Got ourselves a poke action figure. I mean, that makes sense. Of course it would be in the toaster. I'm almost afraid to see what's going on in his bathroom. Uh, so we got ourselves the K-Cannon Revolver, a weaponized flare gun. Fires globs of potassium that burn at over a thousand degrees. Small arm skill, and of course, fires energy cells, because every weapon has to fire energy cells. And here we have an oily stain soaked into the label of this cassette tape, but you can make out the words, Sweet dreams are made by me. Oh man, please tell me it's not him doing a cover of that song. If it is, I may, I may just end the episode.
That's right. Just keep breathing. And leave the rest to me. Okay, I don't know that we needed that. I think it's been explained to us quite thoroughly how the whole thing here works. But I guess if you had just run in here and killed everybody and not tried to talk to the gift and stuff, th there's a possibility that you would not have understood how the chain of command actually functioned, I guess. By the look of it, this map of Colorado has been crumpled many, many times. You smooth out the wrinkles and see three women's names and some directions beneath them, written in a plain capitalized letters, probably by the patriarch himself. At the top of the map is a single word. Graves. I know those names. Those... Those are the poor ladies who married the patriarch. Every last one of them, dead. The poor ladies or the poor ladies? Was he, was he like, taking women out of poverty to... Okay. Uh, Cleo is what I will click on. Aspen, outside ski shop. The Patriarch's writing is slanted, rushed, almost dismissive. Lara, uh, Colorado Springs, Northwest Park, Quince Bushes. Why would you bury... Okay. Livia. The name hovers above a circle surrounding a remote location outside Colorado Springs. The Patriarch's letters are smaller here than elsewhere. Near the Hoon's residence. Okay. Well, I suppose we ought to investigate that. I mean, do we wanna? Do we do we wanna just dig up the graves of some women? Is that do I think that's likely to be helpful? I don't know, maybe. There's definitely something in this room that we're supposed to be getting a perception ping for, but I don't know what the hell it is. Well, whatever. Problem solved, I guess. We are two of three. So, I don't think there's anything else of terrible import to do here. I am pretty curious what to do with the, um, if there's going to be a thing to do with the peek and poke statues. Like, is there going to be a... A little place in his room to slot them in, like his room back in Colorado Springs. And then we're going to find out that, like, did they open a secret wall or something, maybe? I've played too many of these damn video games. I'm thinking about everything in terms of, uh, in terms of mechanical value. Alright, let's put in the thing that obviously goes here. And what else do we got? It's the Patriarch's Prototype Hammer. The design of the Patriarch's Hammer was subject to several rounds of revisions. So this one... Interesting. It has an indiscriminate attack that does big damage but hits everyone, including yourself. I wonder if the Patriarch is going to have that same move. And there's nothing else in this room. Really, that's it. Huh. Well, I guess if you have a character who is, um... Oh, hey, there's a chainsaw here. If you have a character who's into melee weapons, maybe it's a pretty good one. Did I interact with the head on the floor here? I guess not. It looks like you can't. Someone went hog wild with this chainsaw. There's so much blood and body parts, it's hard to tell which limbs belong to which corpse. You know, for for Cetras. Rangers. I'm starting to wonder if it got you. Really? After the arrest team came through and grabbed him and hauled him off? Good to see you getting shit done, November. I'll radio HQ and get them to send us some transport. See you there. Yeah. Ditto. You're all right. She, she is also going to Radio HQ, I guess. Before you head out, I have something to ask you. If I go back to Ranger HQ now, I'll probably end up in a room doing lab work. To be honest, I'm kind of tired of research. I'd rather take my chances out there with you. There are some things you just can't learn in the lab, you know? So... Can I join your squad? Uh, I really like the goofy team we've got put together here. If I say welcome to the squad, am I going to have to actually put her in our, our our six? Or is that is she going to be cool just staying back at our base instead of going back to Arizona HQ? Which is what I assume she means when she says HQ. I'm going to say welcome to the squad. Glad to join your team. And then we're going to hit cancel. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what long-term effect that has. All right, let me loot this ammo crate that I apparently forgot about. And then I guess let's go try to find the ski shop. I don't know exactly where the ski shop is, but obviously 
it would be great for this grave situation to be uh, to start getting resolved because I'm curious. Uh, what is what is the bonus you're getting from the fox? Oh, leadership range. I'm gonna release the fox and we're gonna take this rabbit. I don't remember what the rabbit does. I bet it makes you fast. It gives you 20% initiative. Okay, well, it's better than the leadership thing, I guess, which does actually nothing because he's not the leader. So the ski shop will be down the mountain, I guess. Hold on. Let me look at my map here. Are any of these things marked as... I wouldn't imagine. Also, I don't know what that... It's weird that that sound seems to have like a little bit of fuzz in it or something. It almost sounds like interference. Okay, we'll go back down to the bottom and see which of these buildings is the ski shop. It's possible that this is just like one of the buried items um, interactions that we've already seen. But my guess would be that you can't find the grave without knowing that it's there. I think it's one of those kinds of things. Okay, we got some hundred families reputation. Is there a thing that is marked ski shop? No. Well, shoot, then we're just gonna have to actually look at the buildings and I, here's a problem. I don't know what a ski shop looks like. I have never in my life been in a place where I could, <laughs> where I could go to a skiing resort, so. Uh, is the growler still here? The growlers are in fact still here. We probably should not mess with them. That's my feeling. Run with the big dogs. Uh, hey, that looks like a th Okay. Can we... Hmm. That, yep, yeah, that's the grave, for sure. Okay, can we approach this from the other side, maybe? And not have to deal with the growlers? I don't remember exactly how this area works. So let's see, this is where we... This is that big plaza. Did we interact with everything here? Uh, there was a, um, there were mines that we couldn't open, so I, or, or couldn't disarm, so we do have to be a little bit careful. Alright, yeah, let's get out here. You know what? This is where that dough is, isn't it? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take the dough. Where's my rabbit? I'd like to dismiss my rabbit. Sorry, rabbit, you've been a good companion. You've done everything that we've asked. And I think you're a total, a total sweetheart, but just, you know, go do rabbit stuff somewhere else. Uh, what about you? What do I get from you? Okay, well, whatever. That's fine, I suppose. So, Jim can pick this, and then we might have to navigate some traps, I guess. Vic. You sick puppy. So that is controlled by this thing. There's some buried stuff over there. How do we... Hmm. So, yep, there's a whole bunch of hanging corpses. What does this do? Uh, boy. So if you step off of here, it's pretty straightforward. There was a buried items thing, yeah, over here. Hold on a second. I'll let you through the flames in just a moment. So yeah, there's a whole, like, uh, it's like family double dare out here. A big pile of corpses. If you're gonna re eat the rich, make sure they're properly cooked. Yeah, I, listen, nobody should eat the rich. Prion diseases, man. So <laughs> there's lots of other things we can do to them. So okay, now we should be able to just walk everybody through, except for that, except for Skelly, I guess. Skelly's gonna just stay here and admire the flames. You know, she likes to be close to the flames. Right, because at this point, if we step her off of this, it's going to re-enable that fire. Oh no, while disabling this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're good. Everybody just come through this way. 
So, this seems bad. Feels like we ought to turn this off. And that's a person. Hey, that's like a person we ought to save. How you doing there? Oh, God. Is... Is someone there? Please, if someone is there, help me. Help me die. I, I, I've been here for... I think the sun set three times. Uh, euthanize is different from kill. <laughs> Let's examine his wounds. A large gash runs from his belly button to his ribcage, most likely from the spinning blades nearby. If there was any ever any hope to save his life, it evaporated once the gangrene took hold. Okay, that's pretty grim. Uh, apologies, my dude. Toss the man's limp body onto the nearby switch to hold it down. Uh, am I... Here's a question. Am I going to still be allowed to do this after euthanizing him? I, gu I guess let's do it the nice way. Uh, th thank you. And then they and then they make us actually listen to it. Yep, again, the tone's just not... It's not landing the way they want it to. Well, we do get his loot. They made him ragdoll. That's... <laughs> That's a decision. The Tao of Ginsu, slicing our way to better meals. A cookbook detailing how to make healthier food with focused precision slices. Alright, so... That is a thing I can't disarm. Oh no, wait, we did... Yeah, we just got nine points, that's right. Well, I guess it's best we didn't come through here earlier. Is Brass going to be able to squeeze past here? Yeah, this looks okay. Oh, wait, what are you doing? Boy, she's making me real nervous, is what she's doing. Okay, I know where we are now. Just please, please only go to the places I tell you to go to, and not any other places. I can't explain to you how important this is. Okay, so... Now that we've disarmed this... I mean, this is gonna get you chopped, right? Well, whatever, now she's... Yeah, so it looks like somebody somebody has to take a hit. One of them has to get um, deactivated first, right? Like a Cobb salad made of people. Is that really meaningfully different from most Cobb salads, though, when you think about it? She'll be fine. Okay, the ski shop. Hey, look, we found it. Yep, all the bears got lots of feelings about us, and they can continue to have lots of feelings about us. Apparently, those are explosives that Quan is standing on right now. Oh, you heal the full when you level up. I don't think that's a thing we knew. Uh, some human bones. Great. And also, a Casio. And some gold and a skull. Well, listen, you can never have too many skulls. I do, I believe that quite strongly. Just think about it. Think about all the people you know who don't have a skull, and then think about all the people you know who do have a skull. Which of those groups is better off? Right? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it is not clear to me what this wheel is going to do. I'm concerned that it will open the gate and let the growlers out, so we're not going to mess with it. Let's investigate this grave. According to the Patriarch's map, this is the grave of Cleo, one of the Patriarch's wives. So it's not like a hidden thing. It has a, it has a marker. I wonder if it would have been visible to us if we had come here before. I remember her. A little. Pretty. Not too smart. Never got the sense that the Patriarch cared much for her, but after his previous wife tried to kill him and steal his throne, a wife who was pretty and dumb must have been a nice change. Uh... I guess let's dig up the bo- I don't feel that this is very respectful. You dig down into the frozen earth. After some hard work, you unearth a coffin. Opening the lid, you find a skeleton inside. Well, I guess inspect. <laughs> the game is letting us do this for a reason, presumably. Cleo's skeleton is petite and of average height for a woman. The cause of death seems obvious. A single bullet hole in the middle of the forehead. I assume we're going to find that all of them were murdered, and then we're going to, for some reason, that's going to be useful to us? I mean, to be 100% clear, my plan is already 
to gather all of the Buchanans in one place and then burn the building down. So, I don't know that it's actually going to be all that useful. Maybe this is like if you're really slow on the uptake and you hadn't put together that the Patriarch is bad news just on account of, you know, the fascism, then, then this might be the thing that pushed you over. Alright, let's get out of here. I think we've seen enough of Aspen for one lifetime. It is unfortunately going to be a bit of a run. Oh, also, are we spending your level up? Do you do you have enough points? We should probably just max out explosives, right? Uh, did we we don't have a book for this, do we? I don't believe we do. Gosh, I have a lot of garbage. Oh no, I totally do. Well then, I guess let's take big guns, shall we? What if even more big guns? What if even bigger guns? And, uh, awareness, I guess, at this point? We don't really need more intelligence. She's kind of out of things to spend skill points on as it is. Speed? More speed? Yeah, sure. I do feel like we're sort of, we're, we're kind of at the top of the mechanical curve a little bit here. A lot of our people are sort of maxing out in their roles, so... Probably we should just go ahead and blow on through to the end of the game. Alright, I think this is probably a pretty good stopping place for today. Thank you all so much for watching. We've dealt with two of the Buchanan children, and the last one is not all that far away. Uh, when you come back next time on Monday, I suppose we're digging right into that. And we'll see you then.